basic premise is it's he's on fire. If anybody's played, we back to the NBA Jam the, the days, uh, video game days. NBA Jam. If you made three baskets in a row without letting the other team score, you were on fire. So anybody that's made a couple shots in a row, they're on fire. So if you made three, you know, great albums in a row, we're, we're counting that as on fire. So that's uh, kind of the basic idea. Um, they don't have to be completely front to back albums, but I tried to pick ones that were for the most part. Um, uh, but and you know there are some that are even four and five, which is a different whole different stratosphere. But three is harder than you think. I'm looking mm. through some of the the the, uh, the groups that I love and come back to regularly. I'm like, oh man, they kind of had a misstep here. They only had two, and then they had two more, or they had two, and then they had three more after that. Um, but yeah, it's it's not the easiest feat to pull yeah. off. And so. I think it was it was someone in I think it was in the comments of our Instagram post because we kind of put a teaser out there in the last week. I think it was there where someone made a good comment. It's like there are some bands with that don't even have three total. Um, yeah. So it's hard to even get three total, let alone in a row, because, you know, like Tony said, there's a misstep in there, whether it's changing sound, f- changing fan base, label influence, all that. So yep. to come sophomore hit slump. it. Yeah, so- sophomore slump. So to hit it three in a row. It's rare, and I I really tried to pick three that are great. All right, who did? Well, I we, obviously I, I was gonna do Zebrahead, but we'll, we'll we'll save that for another day. We'll want to talk about them again. Yeah. So my first my first one is Saliva. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's awesome. No, uh, no bad vibes. You know, just you know, they just didn't make the list. Yeah, no, they just didn't have three straight great <laughs> albums in a row. I mean, I love the song "Hero" with Chad Kroger. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> click, click, boom. Still good. I mean, I'll get you amped up. Um, no, I'm gonna start with Kanye. Nice. Yep. Um, and it, it's funny uh, just talking about the three in a row. I think his first three albums are awesome. Um, I did not get into f- the fourth one as much, but a lot of people would say he had a five album run. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's there's enough people out there that would would vouch for his first five. But I'm going to stick with the first three uh, college dropout, uh, late registration and graduation. I feel like that kind yeah. of the college trilogy for a number of reasons for me is is just unassailable. Um, the beginning of it started my freshman year of college. So. That came out, and he's rapping about not wanting to be in college and wanting to be a musician, all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm in the middle of Southern Maine. None of all my friends moved away, and went to college. I'm sticking around at home to stay to go to school here, and I'm feeling a lot of what he's saying. And um, you, know, you were feeling track- it because we're feeling it because you wanted to be a professional podcaster. I did. Yeah, it just took me 15 years to get there. 16 before the word <laughs> podcast was even a thing. Yes. <laughs> yep. It wasn't even a thing. You're right. We were listening to the radio. Um, but I just remember hanging out with a couple of friends that I had made at school um, and them playing it for me and, you know, just being up, having beers and listening to College Dropout with buddies. And that's kind of like the first like, oh, man, I like this. I, I could I could get into this. So I, for me, the, obviously, the key, I picked some key tracks um, through the wire, which you guys know and a lot of people know. He had gotten into a car accident before this kind of all came to fruition for him. And his mouth, his jaw was broken and wired shut. And he wrapped that whole song through the the wired shut and that's where you get through the wire um all falls down was a big song i love that song uh it yeah. just it was just kind of perfect for for me in that time frame it still it holds up to this day yeah. um and then jesus walks he's obviously very religious um wanted that on the radio and was was laughed out of most label rooms they're like dude you can't write a song about Jesus and have it put, played on the radio, but he, he proved them all wrong. That song was obviously huge. So um, those are kind of um, the songs you see, I love. There are more than those songs that I loved, um, but those are the kind of big ones that stood out to me. Um, collabos, he had a lot of collabos in that first record. Jay-Z, yeah. obviously, who kind of found him because he had made beats for him for um, the Black Album. Um, he had Quali on there. Um, on a song with Common as well, which is pretty big. So he went from Jay-Z, a, a very viable commercial rapper, to Quali and Common, who are a little more um, indie underground type rappers, had them on there together. That's kind of a you know a testament to what Kanye could do back then. Um, Ludacris, he had Ludacris on a track. He had Jamie Foxx on a couple of tracks, one in this album, one on the next one. 
and then uh, Twista and Most Def too. So he, I mean, he brought out some big guns for that first record. Um, and I mean, it's still, I listened to it fairly recently. It still holds up, but it's just, it's a fun hang as far as Kanye goes. Uh, right into late registration. I actually, we, we want to talk about that album first before we jump into the next one. Yeah, I think you nailed it. Like that, yeah. I remember getting into that album a decent amount, but it wasn't until late registration because obviously late registration was a bigger, uh, bigger commercial success with Gold Digger and whatnot. Um, yep. What was the uh, what album was uh, the Jamie Fox Twista song? Slow Jams was it? Yeah, and that was the first one. That yep. was okay. Oh, well, that was huge. That, I mean, that you could. Yeah, and that yeah. song was big. Yep. That was huge. And that that was kind of Twist. Twista had that moment right around then too, where he just kind of blew up a little bit too. And part of it was being on Kanye's record. Part of it was just being super fast rapper and catchy beats and probably Kanye beats too, right? I mean, they were yeah. collaborating. So, um, so yeah, that was you know that was my my first one. Second one is Late Registration, which again, great tracks, great collabos. Um, just kind of a great talk about no sophomore slump here. Like this album was just as good, if not better than college dropout. Um, for me, obviously big tracks, gold digger with Jamie Foxx. Everybody knows that one. That song still holds up. Touch the sky. Awesome song. Yeah. That song. And this is Kanye chopping up old soul records and turning them into just fire beats and yep. rapping on them. And this is what he did best back then. Um, the way he, if you go back and listen to, I think it's on life of Pablo or no, uh, yay. The, the, I miss the old Kanye, chop up the soul Kanye. Like that's this is the kind of Kanye that I like. This <laughs> is that stuff. So oh, man. Um, he even acknowledges that he used to be that way, and people love that stuff better. <laughs> but <laughs> that song, uh, heard him say, is a great song. Uh, that's with Adam, Adam Levine from uh, Room, Room Five. Five. Yeah. Yep. So jumping from genre to genre with people on the album now, like he's just feeling himself and doing what he can which is you know it was perfect had the diamonds from sierra leone was a big song he had the remix with jay-z so he had a jay-z collaboration um he that had the game on that remix with jay- jay's verse is awesome so and good. we'd get we'd get so to watch good. the throne later on which obviously is a great record so yeah. uh pretty 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 cool stuff i uh, had brandy on a song um i loved the paul wall drive slow yeah. I just that song was my favorite song on that album it wasn't the biggest song on that album but i just love the beat i love the the Delivery, the Paul Wall stuff is cool. It's just, it's a cool feeling for that song. Did that have uh, a and then, crack music? Yes, yeah. crack music. Yeah, yeah, with that. yeah, The game is on there, I think. Um, and then Lupe hit Lupe on a song too later on. So, um, oh, and Cameron, Gone, the song at the end of the album. I oh, love yeah. that song. Yeah, that's there's yeah. so many great Kanye lines in that song. It just, yeah. uh, I'm ahead of my time. Sometimes years out, certain powers of be won't let me get my ideas out. It's just such a yeah. great, it's such we, a great idea. we always text each other those those lines right there. Yeah, the it's time. just yeah. So I mean that that was a talk about not no sophomore slump there. That album was just friggin' fire. It just there's not a bad. There's no like uh, there's no place to take a breath. So that was cool. Any thoughts on that album, guys? Oh man, that's the album that got me into Kanye. To be completely honest, because I. I didn't know a whole lot about that first album. My sister was a big fan. She used to tell me about it, and I'd be like, I'll check it out eventually. Um, And then Late Registration came out, and so this was the era of CDs. (laughs) So I popped it in my my car CD player and spun the whole thing, and I listened to it like eight times through because it was so sick. And that's when I kind of got into the, uh, the first record. But yeah, man, what an awesome fucking album, and what a time. Like, that's a that's definitely a time capsule for an artist mm-hmm. like Kanye. He's kind of like coming up. He's not quite, I mean, now he's huge, right? So yeah. Yeah. Talk about like gradual. Well, steps. I would say by the end of late registration, he was pretty huge. Yeah. Um, the first sure. album did well and like three and a half times platinum. And, and this one obviously did well too. So I think he kind of turned into, you know, turned into Kanye at this point. And yeah. late, late reg is what? Oh, five. Oh, six. Uh, yep. Eight thirty, two thousand five. 2005. Yeah. Wow. And then college dropout was two ten, two thousand four. So a year and a half in between. Damn. Yeah. Those those yeah. those pass the test. Yeah, and I feel like those two together are very similar in sound. I mean, he kind of was feeling him. I think he was feeling himself a little bit more on late registration because of just the way he sounded and a little a little more braggadocious than he was on on the previous one. But yeah. awesome, it worked out for him. Um, and then I think graduation, he kind of changed his sound a little bit. And at first, I wasn't feeling it. I mean, I loved the the single stronger. But I was a Dat Punk fan, so yep. hearing that turned into a rap song, I was like, "Oh, well, this is the best of both worlds." And again, he's you know bringing other people from different genres on to help 
collaborate and change up, um, you know, kind of bend the rules a little bit, which was really cool. Um, this this one came out uh, 9-11-2007, so that's a couple, almost two years after late registration. Stronger is obviously a key track. Uh, Good Life with T-Pain was a cool song. Um, Can't Tell Me Nothing is, is just an awesome Kanye song. Oh, it's one of my and favorite the, songs. Yeah, and yeah. the video, the video with uh, Zach Galifianakis is just great. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah. awesome. I mean, you guys will see that, but I'm sure we'll post that later on. Um, but yeah, and then you had Little Wayne and Most Def on this one, and Chris Martin was on a song from Coldplay. Um, so yep. again, not afraid to to get out of the rap game and pull some people in from from other um, other walks of music. So that was at first again. I, I didn't love this album, but I've grown to absolutely love it. So I feel like these three in a row, kind of unassailable as far as Kanye goes. Now. I, yeah. You, a lot of people love 808s and Heartbreak, which came out next. I never got into it. I didn't same. hate. I didn't hate the songs I heard, but it wasn't the same feeling for me as, as these ones were. And then yeah. I think my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is a friggin' masterpiece, which came out after. But we can talk about that another time. <laughs> what uh, nice. What album was the line? Uh, Yell, pop the trunk, I pop the hood. That was off graduation, I think. What song was that? Yeah, I forget. I what don't it know. Was. But yeah, yeah, he's got some one-liners in there. So many. And every time you hear one, you're like, ah, oh, dude, he's just that's just what sets him apart. <laughs> I do think 808s yeah. is a misstep. I think he's one album from a 5P, which yeah. is, yep. un- I mean, there's a, maybe a handful of yep. bands or artists yep. that hit that. Uh, but actually, some people think 808s is his best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. There's some real hom- yeah. homers for that album. I never got into it, though. Again, it's him changing sounds and trying to, you know, do something different. So I can't fault him for that. But then, you know, it, it just, I don't know, it just didn't hit for the, me the way that these other three did. And then that uh, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy hit. Because, I mean, we were living together when that one dropped upon in 2010. And I don't, I couldn't get away from it. I listened to it all the time. The graduation uh, album, I was living in New York City at the time. So I was already all pumped on on late registration so when that dropped i was living in manhattan no I was living in brooklyn I was living in brooklyn greenpoint and uh living with devin you guys know devin coin oh yeah um uh, yeah we were we were both digging that album hard we'd play it all the time and just like play it in the kitchen and just like jam to it and it's it's such a i don't know i got into it instantly to be honest because i think i was already pumped on kanye and yep. but understandably you're more of a legacy fan you're like this is kind of like a, a sharp right like this the cha- the cha- uh, sound just like randomly completely changes on that album but um i was digging it man and i remember he was coming to madison square garden and is it on late registration where he's talking about how jay-z didn't hook him up with tickets for the madison square show you remember, you know something like that yeah. yeah yeah so when he did a headlining show at madison square is the first time and i'm like uh devin we have to go to the show it's going to be him it's rihanna it's lupe fiasco it's nerd it's a killer lineup and it was his first headlining show at uh, Madison Square, but similar to all the scalping and reselling we're talking about, that show sold out instantly and tickets were way too much. He ended up adding like five dates. It was like a four or five date run, Madison Square Garden wow. run. I miss all of them because they were all oversold in New York City. It's like <laughs> the Bay. It's like there's so much money. Everyone's, they don't even care if they're paying like 800 bucks or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So I ended up waiting to see him at Bonnaroo. And... This is a tangent of a tangent. Because um, <laughs> I really wanted to see him. I was stoked on, on what he was doing. I thought this album was killer. Um, so I went to the Bonnaroo Festival in Tennessee. And it's just like diehard. Like, I got to see him. This is going to be epic at a festival. And he kept uh, telling the promoters that he wasn't ready yet. And ironically, I was seeing my favorite band at the time, Pearl Jam, play their set. And they would get visual cues from the side stage, like, yeah, Kanye's not ready, so you guys can keep playing. So Pearl Jam played an extra long set instead of their, like, original time. And Kanye kept putting it off. He didn't end up coming out until 4 or 5 in the morning. And at that point, I had officially given up. I was, like, not trying to stay up that late. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, and, I mean, he's obviously gone, and he's open about it, gone through some mental health stuff. And yeah. I'm sure that that was one of those nights he's just like, I, I can't. And that's understandable. I mean, I'm not going to shame him for any of that. That's just – it's a bummer that that's something he's got to go through. It's tough. Yeah, he's – yeah, he's doing some rock star stuff maybe. But also, you were talking about, like, 808s. It's like I feel like that's when it really went to his head. You know, I think he was pretty feeling it himself <laughs> during graduation and even late but i think 805 or 808s he was like i'm the fucking man and ever since he's kind of been 
that's who he is. He's that's his mm-hmm. persona, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it is what you You're associate right. with Kanye is like this cocky dude. <laughs> I think that that was a turning point. I think the yeah. success of the first two, yeah, and then the third is when the experimentation came. Yeah. Um, you know those eight oh eight beats, mm-hmm. and what album was Chris Martin on? You said. Uh, he was on graduation. on graduation. Homecoming, I think, is the song. Yeah. Yeah. So then you got 808s, and then he gets on to Dark Twisted, and it's kind mm-hmm. of a a mix of, you know, because Bonavera yeah. was it is it Justin from Bonavera? He was on that. Yeah, just Justin Vernon. Yep. He was on that, so it was. There. It, it makes sense. They're, you know what I mean? Yeah. If if you listen to the new stuff, back to back to the first album, you're like, what the hell happened? But the stepping stones to get there makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's kind of. So yeah, that. Me. No, and I, and I, it's. I'm sure if I listened to it, I'd probably like some stuff on it. But it, as far as like, yep, love this could put it on today. Yep, love this could put it on today. The, the, those three are the ones for me, and uh, to to make it into that, those three, I needed them to be like that, and it wasn't. So 